All right, just the west ones to go. West ones. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I'll be. I'm not sure. That's the thing he's moving around. I'm not sure cult is the right word, but it said that like, he got some disciples and some followers, so it kind of does give me a bit of a cultish vibe, potentially. The reason I have always admired Alexandra Trennan is that even in death, she fought to see the world as it is, not as she wanted to see it. I say fought because I believe this is not an easy matter. It is a mental and spiritual struggle that we must undertake with great seriousness, even when we are choking. The ancients believed that for most of us, the world is a shadow cast by a flame dimly seen on the wall of a cave. Our task is not to interpret these shapes, but to free ourselves from the cave itself. Okay. I think that might be the, might be the DLC. Are they, are they confirmed DLC? I mean, I'm very surprised if there, there wasn't going to be a DLC. Is this seriously up here and I missed this one here? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can see that. Sometimes new citizens come to me and they want to learn from me. My work appears to have created a legend of sorts. In these moments, I understand your situation. I want to teach them, but what they must learn the most is independence of thought. How does one resolve this contradiction? They wish to come along on my journeys, but I do not need a group of fawning acolytes following my every step. A journey truly worth undertaking is really easy. And so, I have begun to think of a much greater challenge. A journey that is almost impossible to the far ends of the world without any mechanized means of transportation. This will be a true act of faith. And they will learn a great deal from it. If we survive. Yeah, I can see that. Will be. Um, definitely the way he talks about the fact that he's going off on his own on this adventure, this journey. Um, the only like thing I would say about like that potentially is how puzzles would fit into it. If he's like just exploring the world on his own, where would the puzzles and uh, come from? But you no, know, just. My thoughts on that were on a rather quick thoughts on it, of course. Not really giving it too much thought. Yeah, I think that's um Well we'll touch on that in a little bit, Fierce. So I want I wanna come back to that. Um when we come back to it in my um as I wrap everything up give like a final thoughts and feedback kind of thing we'll, we'll come back to that in my reports to you I have often spoken about this island in terms that some might perceive as negative I hope you understand that the opposite is true here in these green hills, I see tremendous potential for transformation and 
spiritual awakening. I do not see the world as you do, Athena, but I see the rot at the heart of New Jerusalem. If you and Cornelius want to go through with your plan, then this is the perfect place. My students and I will help you transport the remaining tech from New Alexandria. After that, once you and Cornelius are settled, we will leave for our great journey. I can only hope that we all find what we are looking for. Yeah, that's interesting. Interesting thought. Uh, okay, so... There it is. I was like, where's my so social media post? So, Lithrazir and his students help Athena and Cornelius execute their plan. Another fascinating discovery, a courtesy of 1K. Many of the events in our city's history that seem disconnected turned out to be part of a bigger pattern. There's something to be learned from that. This does answer some questions I had, like how Athenius and Cor Corneli Athenius. Athena and Cornelius transported all that equipment from New Alexander to the island. Disturbing, but good to know. Lithrazir was so cool. Half the time I had I have no idea what he's talking about in his recordings, but it's all just so interesting and weird. Good work, 1K. Yeah. I suppose this answer here. An interesting idea. We should definitely think about it. It seems that for Lithrazir, this attempt had a sort of philosophical or spiritual purpose, and we wouldn't want to disrupt that. Discreetly checking to see if they're okay should be all right. Okay. Uh, I'll probably still be around in 20 minutes' time, I'm curious. Uh, it depends how much, like, how much more we can sort of do. So... I didn't realize you could uh, reorder these. That's pretty cool. Um, right, so we can't do Rand. You know what's first? So yeah, we can't, um, definitely can't do the Rand to get Electric Mayor in this playthrough. We'd have to do another playthrough for that. Um, now, can we do anything with Sinner? I wonder. Let's have a little look, see. The achievements require a playthrough. Okay. At the beginning of the game, Dodge 666 will approach you in the tower and tell you about her friends. Let her know that you are interested in me, then, which I did. While progressing through the game, she will send you a message, consent to her request of gathering and sharing your personal data, and answer her questions. When she sends you another private message, tell her to go ahead and accept the connect to connect with her friends. Okay, so yeah, that requires uh, another playthrough. Uh, following the steps described above, or not what it seems, when you're in North 2, flooded by into the interact with the Som drone in the Lost Lab. Continue playing until you reach Lost Lab in West 2. Enter the Lost Lab to find uh, guarded by the mayor. Tell him that you are going to use it, then interact with the device to discover the truth. Okay? So those two are connected. Oh, and these ones are mutually exclusive. Okay. So they unlock at the beginning of Act 5. After the election, 
Mead will tell you who got elected to the new uh, Rand, Byron or, or the current mayor. Jeremy can also be elected on the election for the bail result in Milgo. There are no achievements to make those outcomes. Okay, so that's basically telling you how to back up your save file. Basically, you play through to West 2, back up your save file, and then after West 2, that's where your um, yeah, that's basically where it all changes after that. Okay. So we, yeah, it's all going to be new playthrough stuff there. Um, Where was that, that one that you were saying about? Um, all of Trevor's, all of the Thrazars. Right, so here. Every manifestation of the past. Yeah, I think, like I said, I think you've just got to find these, LB. I don't think you, the Stratton ones have anything to do with it. This is what I assumed it was, like finding all of these sections. Yeah. How many human artifacts are there in total? Is it just 10? Well, they spawn randomly. More than 10. I didn't realize they were random. That's why they spawn randomly. That's interesting. Well, did, actually, did you say that in a previous video, LB? Possibly. There's more than 10. Um, so the only other one was... Where's the Thecla one? Probably skipped it, because it's probably in the New Jerusalem, right? This achievement can only be unlocked after returning to New Jerusalem halfway through the game. Basically, have to tell her that you don't want to waste your time talking to idiots. I'm not sure that there's um, any more info for that. I, I guess I won't be able to. I guess in my decision and my conversation with her will now be locked in. So, I don't even know if I can return. Can you return at any point to New Jerusalem? Yeah, you see, the problem is here, I enter the VTOL and we don't go back, do we? We go straight to the, um, we, we go into the megastructure, so there's no option to go back. So you can only go back to New Jerusalem at, like, the set story times, I guess, which is interesting. Um, 
Yeah. All right, so. Real talk for a moment. Is there anything else of interest that we haven't seen? That we could uh, look at real quick? Or are we about done? At least one Easter egg in each area, according to the guide. Interesting that like they they've chosen to put those in afterwards. Eighty-two videos. Yikes. Are they similar kind of in in like the sense of like the Easter eggs in the original game? Photo mode. Okay. Um. Yeah, maybe. Possibly. Uh, I mean, if that's the case, and there's that many of them, and the majority of them involve like breaking um, boxes out of puzzles and doing stuff with that, then. I might just take a hard pass on that and say, nope, for now. And I might just have a look at some bits and pieces like that in my own time. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, I think. This could be the end. Um, okay, it's the possibility. I just uh, want to keep an eye on the time because I do want to just give myself um, 10, 15 minutes at the end just to kind of do a wrap up and a bit of a summarize my thoughts about the game. Time to go. It's been a long journey, but soon we'll finally be able to go home. And this time, we'll bring Athena with us. I think, for, for me, and obviously I know I've already seen it once, but I just think it's that whole, they want to keep the tension and they want to build it. Because I think this, this like, this cutscene here did a fantastic job at, like, building the tension, like, entering the final area. The whole music and the scale of it, like, the whole uh, environment. So, you know, I don't mind that they can't skip this one because, like I say, I um, quite enjoy this section.
I kind of feel though, like inside this mega structure is a bit of a TARDIS. The fact that we just flew like all the way around the outside of it, and then we go into the middle, and we just keep going, and going, and going. I'm pretty sure we've like already covered like the length of the mega structure. Yeah, did. <laughs> Welcome back, Furious. We're just gonna do this last section again real quickly, if I can remember. So, spoilers are welcome, if I forget anything. The singularity. We have to stop this one, K. I think I remember most of it, given that we had to solve the whole thing again tonight, so... I'll do what I can to help you. But I suspect it's up to you now, 1K. We have his backpack on there. But now he's got his backpack on. What is this? On the All right. Set your timer. Here we go. Speed run dot incoming. Somewhere. Let me send that to that. Uh, red. We need to send... That's right, that's right, that's right. Uh, let's try that again. Because I've already failed the speed run. Make red. Reset this, put that into there, put that on there, take this, set that there, and there. And then take the blue. Alright, let's go. Side first. Side first? Yeah, I'm side first. Let's get the red first. Press the button. Alexandra Drennan said that we are not entirely bound by time. Our minds can recreate the past and predict the future. She said knowledge is a kind of freedom. But I have the ultimate knowledge. And I'm not free. It's weird though that the, the Alcatraz didn't have his backpack on because... It's one thing I commented on in, in my original playthrough. Like, he did have it on originally. Yeah, it's kind of weird. But at that point, he didn't. When he walked out in the VTOL. But... One of those things.
Now I can do it in the right order. What you talking about? The order I did things in was quite strange originally. I can calculate the future of this planet. All the things that we will see if we choose not to act. It works, right? The continents will move, the mountains will fade away, even the stars will change. The days will grow longer as the rotation of the Earth slows. I think I may have gotten ahead of myself a little bit here. Back we go. Yo, Mr. Fab. How we doing? Good to see ya. You join us as we have just finished the game. We're actually on our second run through of this. Um, we're just having a bit of a play around. We just uh, so yeah, we finished the game and um, we got a few of the achievements that we needed. So all the remaining achievements we need now are let's do another playthrough for. But yeah, we're just going to see like what different dialogue we can get here. There will be volcanoes and asteroids, earthquakes and floods. Slowly, day by day, the moon will drift away, and we will still be here. And then once we've done that, we're going to just spend 10, 15 minutes having a chat about things. I think I'm just placing it too far away from the mag surface, so, or the anti-grav surface. So I'm just literally placing it and it's just falling down.
Let's go. Out of the water. How's my order of solving going this time? He spends it. Um, more to your liking. Big jump. Ten million years until every species has gone extinct or been replaced. A hundred million until the rings of Saturn fall from the sky. 500 million until the sun starts getting brighter and everything on Earth starts dying. Um, I need to remember what I do here. I need to accumulate blue, but I need to send a red through there. Skip stuff. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, you do need to climb for something else. I'm standing the uh, the fan over here, the button. I think. Oh no, you don't actually. No, you don't. You totally don't. I realised. Yeah, I just realized you can stand on the button yourself. It's because I didn't realize that was a teleporter. There is only a billion years left for life on this planet. Every plant, every animal, all that is beautiful will wither and die. But she now stuck. we will watch it happen. But I have to go all the way around again. True, I could move the teleporter. Why didn't I think of that? Lucky. That's lucky. <laughs> the universe will continue for trillions of years, but everything we love about this earth will be gone because we chose not to act, not to take control. Not to be responsible. But if I give them my machine, then it could all end tomorrow. Alright, you still gotta do the last one. Which is fine. Um, so what do we need for the last one? We need to... We need blue, don't we? Blue? Yeah. yeah, I can see how that would be frustrating. Given that, like, there's... It's like a gauntlet of puzzles, almost. Future of the planet 
The death of the sun, the migration of the stars. But I cannot predict humanity. Anything is possible. Nothing is certain. How do I choose? Uh, um... Around here, isn't it? Yes. I don't know, I have to think about how to get there this time. Yeah, so let's go and um, do the Petromino on dy Dystopia. Dystopia. Access to this door, you know, to be honest. It is not enough to postpone the day of reckoning, creature of clay. The flame must be extinguished. Interesting. So, this side you get a Pandora quote rather than a Prometheus quote. Was, was it Pandora? Prometheus last time? It was Prometheus, wasn't it? A Sphinx. Okay. Save Athena. Well, Pan to be fair, Pandora and Prometheus seem to be the main two, so. You. Thank you. All right, so I think I'm gonna go for the top one to shut it down because that's ultimately like two or three streams ago. That's the decision we made that by wanting to embrace it for a start. Um, I said, you know, we need to go and shoot it down. I don't really feel like it's more, even more dangerous than I feared. Um, even after hearing Athena's, like, little tidbits that she said there. So we're going to go for the top option this time around. For so long that I forgot how much Cornelius loved me. I forgot that to save our family, he would move Boy, heaven man. and earth. And with 1K's help, that's what he did. And when I saw them again, for the first time in so many years, I didn't care about the machine or the theory of everything. All that matters in the end is love. You have made a choice that is not a choice. You ended your story without an ending. Many will call you a fool, but I call you wise creature of clay. Answers are dangerous, and there is no end to the questions we must ask. So let the future bring what it may, and trust that you will find understanding in time. Ok. 
think I got out of the machine. Who's buying our home? I understand why 1K chose not to destroy the machine. It's hard to let go of those dreams. And maybe one day we can learn something from what Athena tried to do. But not today. It's been a long journey. It's time to rest and let the future attend to itself. You did what you had to, 1K. They'll figure out the rest for themselves. After all, we're human. We always find a way. interesting so that ending is like um athena cornelius miranda and wonkeo look like they've left new jerusalem and they're just sort of going to find themselves almost somewhere else i mean that almost gave me like dlc vibes the fact that like they've all like gone their own way away from new jerusalem almost like the same sort of thing with lithrazir it's like they're out on their own. What will they find? Interesting. That's it. You don't get anything else from that. Ah. Well then. I just like I'm just trying to like think in my head like how many different endings there must be. I mean, there must be at least six endings, right? Because there was three different options to pick from there. Then, depending on whether you save Miranda or not, I can see another three endings for those those options. But it'd be interesting to see like whether or not there are more endings depending on whether. Melville and you could come with you back come back with you when the final time you visit the um mega structure. Um I'm guessing like the sheer variations on that um um final scene there that we just saw with the crowd arguing is depending on who's the mayor and, and whatnot, as to like where people are stood. So um yeah. Three main endings, but lots of variations and how they can go down. Yeah. Well. That's it, guys. We have finished the Talos Principle 2 after, um... Oh, wait. Look at the game folder. All the videos are in there. I gotta have a look at this. I don't know, Patrick, because when I'm not in the game, it's um loud. Uh alright, let me just check my Steam folder. Uh I can't remember where my Steam folder is though. F drive somewhere. Actually, no. Talos isn't on my F drive. Talos on my C drive. 
to put it on my solid state. Uh... Maps. Alas. Content. Pre rendered movies. Oh, yeah, there's a uh, view. There's all thirty three different ending videos. That's a lot of videos, but I don't know if that's like different different parts and uh, like the add-on to different videos. Anyway, like I said, that brings us to the end of the Talis Prince 2 14 streams, 42 episodes of content. Hope everybody enjoyed the ride. Um so where do we start? Where do we start with this game? Um, first of all, let's start with the story. Um, I really enjoyed the story a lot more than the original game. So I'm not saying like the original game didn't have a story, but there wasn't really a lot other than um, working your way through the simulation and ascending the tower. This, like, having this whole, like, um, ecosystem of a thousand humans was it, it added so much more and so many different directions and, and so many different like ways you can play the game and speak to people it just adds so much life and dynamic dynamicism to the game um yeah i really and like i said i really enjoyed the story um the fact that you know you're going off in search of athena and then all of a sudden you find out that her and Cornelius have got a daughter and her daughter's really intelligent. Um, and then they kind of just hit you like three quarters of the way through the game, like that they've lost a daughter and she died sort of thing, like really powerful stuff. So yeah, I really enjoyed the story. Um, what I will say, and I know it's a massive part of the game, so it kind of... I don't want this to be taken the wrong way, but I don't particularly enjoy like the philosophy side of it. And I know it's such a big part of the game. Um, but for me, and this is like a completely personal thing, um, I don't always follow along and find it difficult to follow along with like when I'm reading like the philosophical, philosophical text passages. So, um, I mean, it's a, it's a nice touch to add into the game if you're into that sort of thing and I, I know it was a massive part of the um original it has been a massive part of the series but for me um I'm not a big fan of it but i am glad in a way that i didn't feel like there was as much as the previous game so i think it's helped with the fact that because you have so many different characters in this game they had the ability to um, voice act a lot of it um, one thing I've always sort of said and been quite critical about my um, Road to Gehenna playthrough was like, in a three hour stream, I always found that it was like an hour of and up to an hour of solving puzzles and then two hours of solid reading text. And for me, being a slow reader, that was quite difficult. So I appreciate that they managed to voice voice act a lot of the lines and a lot of the conversations and things that they wanted to um like portray so yeah I'm, I'm really happy that they did that um let's move on to the puzzles uh well let's not talk about puzzles just yet let's talk about the puzzle mechanics so this game has a lot of new mechanics and it's really refreshing to see like 
them really pushing the boat. Uh, well, I don't know if that's the right term, but pushing the boat out and really going to try and expand on the puzzles that they had already created as a part of the original game. One thing I kind of did feel though and I, I don't know if anybody else had this feeling but some of the elements almost seem to I don't, I don't like to compare and, and say this but some of the elements were very reminiscent of stuff that we see in portal like the funnels and um like the moving platforms so whilst there was some really nice new stuff um it was kind of nice as well to see that they've taken potentially taken a bit of inspiration from um another pu puzzle franchise would i have liked to have seen more with some of the elements i think yes so the funnels were really cool but i would have really liked to see them used a bit more in a different sort of way i, I don't know I, I don't know how and again, I don't want to compare it to Portal 2 and say they should do what Portal 2 did, but maybe like the ability to reverse a funnel might have been cool, like to add like a different dynamic dynamicism to that element in the puzzles. But I think they used the elements really well. It was really nice to go to like a different area around the map and almost be like around like the, the whole map as a whole. Um, and it almost be like, okay, here's a new element, and we're gonna almost not solely, but we're gonna for the majority of the puzzles, we're gonna focus on this element. So you've always got the like the use of your base elements, like your connectors and your like laser emitters and laser receivers, for lack of a better term. I, I, honestly, I don't know what they're called, but um, yeah, it was really nice to see them like focusing on those new elements as you came across them. And then as the time went on, they're kind of like building more and more of the new elements in to combine them and to to mash them all together into a puzzle. So I think they did a really, really good job with all the new elements. Like I say, it kind of opened up a whole new world of puzzles rather than having to kind of like create stuff with like their existing elements. It was um, and gave them almost like the freedom to like be a bit more out there with bits and pieces um but that comes with a big but from me the big but is because there were so many new elements and because they are trying to build you up into the elements to see how everything works honestly i was a little bit disappointed with the difficulty of the puzzles um I, I i probably count on one hand like the number of puzzles that i genuinely um took a lot of time on and felt like they were difficult and got stuck on and i think it's kind of testament to that was the fact that the first time like when i got the achievement for like being in a puzzle for 20 minutes that was like the third or fourth Golden Gate puzzle. We got that far into the game without like being what I felt like being properly stumped on a puzzle. I think there was the one with the where we had to block the block the laser with ourselves and connect everything up. There was the one that had the cool like pushy out wall. That one kind of took me a little while. There was the the one in the Golden Gate puzzle which um you had the red activator and the green activator. I think we did that on the last the last stream, possibly. Um, and I think LB, you said that it took you quite a while to do that. Um, possibly one or two others. But yeah, I, I was just a little bit disappointed that it wasn't... Like, there, there weren't more difficult puzzles. Now, having said that, I almost wonder if... They're going to follow almost what they did with the original game. Whereby, and I think a lot of people will probably, prob 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 oh, sorry, sorry. I think a lot of people will probably agree that the Road to Gehenna puzzles were a lot more difficult than the base game. So I almost wonder, like, they're going down this, this route of, okay, we're going to 
put the game out and we're going to make it accessible for everybody who wants to look at our game, the casual player. But for the more hardcore player who will be buying the DLC, we will ramp the difficulty up. So I will be very interested to see um, like the DLC when it drops, just to see if that kind of like pattern is followed. Um, just let me have a quick catch up on chat here. Um, Hope you really enjoyed the philosophy and search. Yeah, it's cool to see other new Craven mechanics, but I feel like we, yeah, yeah. So yeah, as I think we we agree there, I'll be that like the the mechanics could have been used a bit more, but like I just said, hopefully in the DLC we'll see a bit more. Um, you compare a different way, Portal Wand, Talos One delve deeper into Portals lasers. Well, sorry, Portal Two and Talos Two had many more elements, but less deep. At least in the main campaign. Kind of what DLCs are for, since you can assume, yeah. Okay, so I think we're all kind of agreeing there um, on that. You know, DLCs could possibly see um, more difficult. Um, somehow, I found the puzzles being kind of introductory puzzles. Yep, yeah, even Talos One and Harker puzzles. Though, what are your thoughts on how easy one K sways everyone's opinions? Um, so talking about one K as like a character as such, I think because there has been this big whole. Um, this whole big thing in like New Jerusalem was made about the goal and we need to reach like 1,000 human beings in this um, civilization. So I almost think like because of the whole goal and everything and because they were working towards it, they just instantly assumed that once um, we hit the goal and like human 1,000 comes along, it's like we're going to hang on his every word and whatever he says we're going to do and we're going to follow what he says and we're going to agree with what he says so i almost think it's a way of it's it's a way the story works in a way kind of lb i think that um because of that preconception of the goal and the thousandth human everybody's almost like he's this idolized deity almost that like people have waited their whole life for him to come along and then once he's there, they're like they're, they're just going to hang on his every word. That's the kind of way I I envision it anyway. Um, so that they have harder puzzles, but didn't include them. And they said they're for the DSC. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, he one K is just another human being, you know. Um, but I kind of feel like with the way the whole goal was blown out of portion and athena was idolized and almost put on a pedestal for being number one 1k was done the exact same thing was done with 1k whereby okay he's not number one he's number a thousand he is the last we have the first we must worship her we have the last we must worship him so yeah i kind of see 1k and athena in a very similar position they're they've, they've been hyped up and this whole kind of um, made up philosophy about the goal and everything was just yeah it, it's not done either of them any favors i mean i think because obviously we have control of what 1k says and does we can we were able to be a bit more stern against people whereas athena just sort of seemed to sit back and just like okay um yeah i'll, I'll, I'll go along with it until it got too much when she had to step away and walk away so yeah um explains a little unrealistic though it could be that city is kind of 50 50 is what should be done you're just the tipping point well yeah you know it's consistent to go through the experience of what would have happened if athena stayed and people are banging so yeah i i don't know i just feel like the the thousandth was hyped up so much that um it just almost became you know like a, we're gonna hang off um, every word you say kind of thing so but you know that's what's great about everybody playing these games and, and forming their own opinions it's interesting to see what um everybody else um feels and thinks so um just wanted to go back to um remember where it was there's his comments
Did I cover your comment from earlier, Pythiris, about um, when we briefly touched on the deal, touched on the DLC, and I said I would come back to it? Um, scanning through the chat just to see if I actually did cover it or not. I can't remember what the actual question was. I think we've probably covered it. I think it was your comment that you said earlier on about that the um, developers said that there's going to be harder puzzles for the DLC. So, um, okay, so. Talking about the, um, obviously we've, we've touched on a little bit, but talking about potential like avenues for the DLC. Um, honestly, I, I, I can see uh, your point, LB, about maybe going to Lithrazar and what he's doing. Um, but like I said, like my, my only concern is how that would fit into the story. Now, granted, um, I honestly don't see how any DLC would fit into this story unless, and this is just like a, something I had in the back of my mind, whereby now that the goal has almost been, the, the myth of the goal has been debunked and, you know, Athena is back in civilization. I wondered if, like, maybe they would continue building humans and would we potentially play a role as a new human um in the future in some way shape or form but if that was to happen i don't see it happening in new jerusalem or at the mega structure i do see it happening somewhere else i don't see like it would fit into new jerusalem and i don't see the point really in going back to the mega structure unless there is like a some weird thing where there is something else to find on the island that we haven't found, even though in the ending we got, everything was deconstructed. So, yeah, I really have no idea where the DLC is going to go, in what direction, like how it's going to time with the story. So it'll be really interesting to, to see that for sure. Um Clearly thought a bunch of citizens use the mega structure to have fun set up a bunch of puzzles. Well, stranger things have happened. Museum of Simulation gets new wings to recreate all the puzzles from all the games. No. <laughs> that's, that's a hard no, LB. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Um, but yeah. I'm trying to think if there is anything else that um i want to discuss and, and talk about um some of the stars yeah i mean <clears throat> excuse me so, so comparing like stars from talos one to talos two um i kind of feel like you know especially the um ones are they is it the prometheus ones uh hold on i can't remember which ones they were i have to check i think it's the prometheus ones um they're pretty much just like a fetch quest a fetch quest aren't they like literally all you have to do is find the spark and follow it around the map so yeah that's kind of a bit meh um so <clears throat> the other two weren't too bad like so like you've got like a cryptic map and you've got to kind of find where it is um albeit it would have been cool if you had to um do something more like just flick a switch because most of the time on those cryptic ones you just flick a switch and then it's job done um and then you've got the the ones where you have to kind of set up the elements from inside puzzles to hit other ones, which was pretty good as well. Um, it would have been nice, though, if we'd 
and you know i don't want to keep t tying them to their original game but it would have been nice if there were that there was some element of you have to break out some items from puzzles to um be able to solve or work out the stars um it was very much like all the elements throughout the whole game really it was very much like all the elements are confined to the puzzle and you don't need to do anything else with them which was um i think that's what one of like the the fun points of talos one was that you certain respects had to break out elements from puzzles to do other things so it's a little bit of a shame that they didn't include that in the second game i think um yeah so prometheus follow my sprite go do random thing in the environment and pandora was lasers apart from that one on west 2 which was uh, an activator which was pretty cool um but yeah like more i i would like to have seen more smuggling of elements out of of to do stuff and also like more more stuff out of bounds i mean i'm sure if I, I went back and like looked at that massive long list of 80 odd easter eggs that you said that there was in the game maybe there are some stuff out of bounds like the computer terminal in the um uh the first area i can't think what you call it, lb the um orientation area um yeah more things like that to find maybe there is because like again just like thinking back to like the easter eggs of the original game like you had to like find the parts of a leprechaun and build a leprechaun and it's like crazy stuff so um yeah it'd be interesting like to see all those easter eggs to see what there is and isn't included um but yeah i mean is there any uh, hold on uh just a video about both games and he's very good comments about where i want to say tell us one and can feel like they have more gameplay content puzzles there would sometimes get way more difficult to remain more story yeah i'd agree with that it's more story to it i think i kind of touched on that briefly that you know there was more the, the story was great um and the puzzle not so great um Tales 2 is definitely bigger in all aspects but puzzle wise i think Tales 1 again might have more meat yeah i mean i suppose i haven't talked spoke about this as well i think like and i, I granted that like i've I've played a good chunk of this, like probably two thirds to three quarters of this game on lower like graphical settings. So like all the environments aren't fleshed out. Um, so I like haven't had all the trees and all like the dense foliage and, and stuff like that. But I honestly do feel like the areas, the areas are too big, like the individual areas. So, um, get that they're trying to portray this like like the sheer size of this thing and the sheer size of this island and that like who could have possibly created all of this like it must have taken centuries or, or whatever they're trying to portray there sorry if I, that's i'm just like trying to get to the point um but yeah when you've got like these massive areas there's just so much like wasted space um i don't feel like the like the the individual puzzle areas needed to be so big. Um, I think they were purely going for like eye candy over content. Either that, or they wanted to make these ridiculously big areas and just hide the odd thing here and there. So that it was like really difficult to find and just make the player wander around like aimlessly for hours looking for stuff. Um, but yeah, um, as, that, as that quote says, um, I, I, I completely agree. I, I think I would have liked to have seen smaller areas, more condensed, or, you know, I, I don't know how you would have done it. I mean, I, I was going to say you could... Um, you, you could have, like, restricted the actual inner area if you wanted to have like a big vast area but like put more of a wall around it but then i think it was more of a case that they wanted to showcase these isolated areas i think the only two areas it really worked well were the 
the area where they introduced like the doppelgangers, which was on the snowy mountain, and um, West Two, because like they did it on they they did it on like a vertical scale, so the verticality worked really well. Like the fact, especially West Two, like having to like you like ascending up this mountain, so you haven't got as much like width, like wasted width. But because it's all vertical, you feel like you're actually on a journey. So I feel like West 2 did it really well with like the verticality, having those big like structures, those big statues and structures, and just like going all the way up to the top of the, the mountain. That really worked well. And like I say, as did the, the snow, I can't remember which area it was, but, uh, which level it was, but the snowy mountain area, again, it's like portraying this area of like a, a big mountain, which... Um, has a couple of peaks and you know you're kind of going up and down and, and bits and pieces but yeah everywhere else i think um was wasted space unfortunately which is um which is a shame um you know like i say i think if they wanted to have that much space in the maps like they should have maybe tried to pad it out with a little bit more stuff i don't know how they could have done that and what they could have done to fill it i i have you know i'm just um, putting my thoughts out, I have no suggestions how it could have been improved other than shrinking it down. But yeah, it would have been nice to have something more substantial to find in those bigger areas. Uh, you feel like the witness could fit entirely in single ties to area? Pretty much. Um, if you have some time at some point, could you read my review of the game on Steam? Yeah, I'll check out everybody's reviews now that I've finished the game. Um, so, like, Mr. Fab, thanks for hanging, buddy. Appreciate it. We leave the big areas indicate that there's, there are secrets and easter eggs but there were none well i mean again that's what kind of what i'm saying i don't know if they made these areas big to kind of hide more stuff in and make you explore more i don't know um the teleporting area with the water and rocky arch formations was also pretty good the teleporting area um uh, well is that where you mean whether you, you get the teleporting element um but yeah anyway guys i i don't think there is anything else unless anybody else has got anything else and can i say anything else um so has anybody got anything else that they want to ask me or if not i will i will wrap this up um I think i've waffled on for quite enough um i will say um spoiler alert that um myself and Deathwish haven't done a new podcast for a while and we talked about it earlier on in the week and we are gonna be discussing uh between ourselves um the, the talos principle 2 in our next podcast so um, keep an eye out for that should be coming in the next two or three weeks once we've actually sat down and recorded it and, and gone through it um great work finishing the game yeah thank you very much lb i appreciate you like being here for every stream and i appreciate your um fantastic support um throughout buddy you know you've been um so generous during my playthrough of this i really do appreciate it thank you very much um great to hear your thoughts thank you very much team spen um so Streaming plans next. Um, we're not going straight back to Kingdom Hearts, although I said I was. Um, I've been asked to play uh, Portal Revolution, uh, which I think will take a couple of streams. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take a week off next week. And then the um, week after, we'll do Wednesday, Friday on uh, Portal Revolution. And then the week after, we'll be back to Kingdom Hearts. But we probably, when we're back in Kingdom Hearts, we'll probably be going back to one stream a week. Um, the, like, dual streaming is great. Like, doing this, like, I've really enjoyed doing two nights a week on Talos Principle. But um, it was more a case I wanted to do two streams to get through the game. I didn't want this game to drag on for too long because I'd already waited like, over a month. And I knew a few people were waiting for me to play it. So, um that was fine i didn't mind doing it with this but i kind of don't want to tie myself down to the like the whole thing of like streaming all the time again so um yeah kingdom hearts will go back to one stream a week 
um, because I'm working on other things as well, um, I'm trying to do various other bits and pieces. So I don't want to get like bogged down again with um, playing the same game twice a week. I want to have my freedom in a, in a sense and, and do other things as well. So um, yeah, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate every single one of you who has stuck by this and watched this through to the very end. Thank you very much. You guys are all amazing. Um, enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys, uh, even though it's only just the beginning. Enjoy your weekend. Everybody on YouTube as well, thank you very much for watching if you've got this far. Until next time, until our next playthrough, and maybe when, until the Talos Principle 2 returns, maybe I'll see you then. And until then, I've been not Cuban Awesome. Thank you very much. Take care, stay safe, and as always, happy. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye.